Nowadays, when we think of vampires, we envisage a character dressed in a cape, with fangs and a white face, who by day lives in a coffin, and by night feasts on the blood of humans. But that is all fiction of course, or is it? Here are 5 cases of real vampires, and the terrifying stories behind them. Hit those lights, sit back, and enjoy. The Case of Peter Blagojevich This case is one of the earliest documented instances of vampirism, and is thought to be one of the main influences in the development of the image of vampire we recognise today. Peter Blagojevich lived in a village named Kisilova in Serbia. In life, he was just an ordinary peasant, but after his death in 1725, he was blamed for a spate of sudden and unexplained deaths that occurred shortly after he was buried. In total, nine of his villagers died over a period of eight days, and all nine of them claimed on their deathbeds that they had been visited by Peter the previous night. Furthermore, Peter's wife also claimed that her husband had returned from the dead and come back to their home demanding food from their son. When he refused, Peter brutally murdered him and drank his blood. The terrified villagers were so concerned that Peter was responsible that they decided to exhume his body and examine it for signs of vampirism that, according to local beliefs, included growing hair and nails and lack of decomposition. When they dug up his body, their superstitions were confirmed. Instead of finding his corpse colourless, stiff and decaying, he appeared lifelike and healthy with a glowing complexion and freshly grown hair and fingernails. With a mouthful of blood that dribbled from the corners of his lips, this was enough to convince the villagers that Peter was indeed a vampire and they proceeded to drive a wooden stake through his heart. This caused an explosion of fresh blood to gush out through his ears and mouth of his corpse. In their horror and desperation, the villagers removed the body and set fire to it. Word spread of the incident and it contributed to the vampire craze of the 18th century in other European countries. The Atlas Vampire on May the 4th, 1932, Stockholm police discovered the body of 32-year-old prostitute, Lily Lindstrom, in her apartment in the Atlas area of the city, now known as the Vasastan. Lily died from blunt force trauma to the head, but what was disturbing was that she had bite marks on her neck and other parts of her body, and a blood-stained gravy ladle was found near to her body. The detectives who first responded to the scene suspected that the killer had drunk Lily's blood after he killed her. This was backed up by the fact that despite the brutality of the attack, there was very little blood on or around Lily's battered body. They concluded that the ladle had been used to catch and drink her blood. When the Swedish newspapers got a hold of the grim story, they headlined it with the vampire reference. As a result, the perpetrator became known as the Atlas Vampire. Besides being drained of blood, Lily's corpse had been left naked and face down on her bed, and there was evidence that sexual activity had occurred. But strangely, her clothes were found neatly folded on a chair next to her corpse. Detectives also noted that judging by the decomposition, Lily had been dead for a few days before being discovered. Initial investigations focused on her clients, and in total, nine suspects were interviewed, whose names were never released. None of them were charged, and no further leads were found, and to this day, the case remains unsolved. However, interest in the Atlas Killer is still alive today, and all the evidence gathered from the case can currently be found at the Swedish Police Museum in Stockholm. Fritz Harman Fritz Harman is one of the most famous vampire killers of all time, and between 1918 and 1924, he killed at least 24 boys and young men in Hanover, Germany. His nicknames included the Vampire of Hanover, the Butcher of Hanover, and the Wolfman. Harman's life of crime started at a young age, and when he was just 16, he was arrested for molesting younger boys. He was evaluated and certified as being incurably deranged, and was ordered to be detained in a mental institution indefinitely. But after just seven months, he escaped and fled to Zurich, Switzerland where he remained for 16 months before he returned to Hanover in April 1899. He then went on to have a child with a woman named Erna Lowerwit, and also received notification to perform compulsory military service. 
he was eventually discharged from the military and after the breakup of his relationship with Erna, he drifted in and out of jobs and prison and was a known petty criminal, police informant and homosexual, something that at the time was illegal and punishable by imprisonment, but because of his links with the police, this was overlooked. Harmon's murder spree started in around 1918 when he began luring boys and young men back to his home with promises of employment. Once there, he would ply them with alcohol before raping and murdering them. He killed by biting into their Adam's apple. In most instances, this would cause the victim to die of asphyxiation. Although on several occasions, Harmon would bite completely through their Adam's apple and trachea and drink their blood. He later referred to this as his love bite. All of Harmon's victims were dismembered after their death, a process that took him up to two days before he discarded their body parts in rivers and fields. It was after the discovery of hundreds of bones in the Leon River that suspicion fell on Harmon, and after searches of his home uncovered many items belonging to the victims, he confessed. Following his arrest, rumours started to circulate that the flesh of his victims had been sold on the black market as pork or horse meat, and although no physical evidence was ever found, it's highly likely that this is true as Harmon was known to be an active trader in contraband meat, which was usually boneless and diced and often sold as mints. Harmon's true death toll will never be known. He claimed to have killed between 50 and 70 men, although he was only convicted of killing 24. He was sentenced to death by beheading and executed 18 days after his trial. Following his execution, sections of his brain were removed for forensic analysis and an examination of slices of it revealed traces of meningitis. Harmon's brain was permanently preserved in formaldehyde and remained in possession of a medical school from 1925 until 2014, when it was finally cremated. Vampire in Australia Tracy Wigginton is known as the lesbian vampire killer. She was born in Australia in 1965 and as she grew up, realised she had vampiric tendencies, and from an early age, preferred to drink the blood of animals rather than eat. However, she also had an overriding urge to feast on human blood, and her lover, Lisa Tushkinsky, was a willing donor and would slit her wrist so Wigington could feast on her blood. But this wasn't enough for Wigington, and she wanted to take it a step further by trying the blood of a man. On the night of October the 20th, 1989, Wigginton, her lover, and two other women, Kim and Tracy, planned to do just that. The unfortunate victim was 47-year-old father of four, Edward Baldock, who was walking home after drinking with friends. The women approached him in their car and coaxed him to get in with the promise of sexual favours. They drove him to a park near the Brisbane River, where Wigginton stabbed him 27 times, nearly severing his head, then drank his blood and left his body in the park to be found the next morning. It wasn't hard for police to catch Wigginton, as she had left her ATM card in the victim's shoe. When police interviewed her, she told them that she felt nothing while stabbing Baldock, and that she sat down after and smoked a cigarette while she watched him die. She pleaded guilty to the murder, so the case never went to trial and few details of the horrific death were ever released. Her accomplices were the ones who revealed it was Wigginton's desire for human blood that was the reason behind the murder. In 1991, the jury convicted Wigginton of murder, and she was sentenced to life imprisonment with a minimum of 13 years. Her partner Lisa was also convicted of murder, and regarding the other two, one was convicted of manslaughter and the other one was cleared. After four unsuccessful parole applications, Wigginton was released from prison in 2012 and currently walks the streets. Murticus now this one is not exactly terrifying, but is definitely topical and interesting and deserves to be on this list. It's a modern day vampire who once a week feasts on human blood. His name is Murticus, who is a normal looking man with a wife and a dog who travels the world, reads and writes poetry. But he is also one of the thousands of people around the world who call themselves real life vampires. Murticus publicly came out of the coffin, as he says in 1997, declaring he was a vampire which is defined as anyone who either drinks human blood or offers up their own blood for another to drink. However, Murticus is not a blood-hungry villain with fangs and a cape who comes out at night. 
biting the necks of unsuspecting passers-by. He is someone who claims he needs human blood to make up for the deficiency of proper energy processing within his body, and that it helps him gain energy and strength. Murticus claims that since a child, he felt a hunger for energy, that sleep and food simply couldn't cure, but human blood could. With the emergence of the internet in the 1990s, he discovered that there were people out there just like him. That's when he helped found the Atlanta Vampire Alliance, an organization that promotes unity and offers support to those newly awakened. Today, it's one of the most far-reaching organizations of real-life vampires in the world. Murticus drank his first human blood in his mid-twenties by using a lancet to carefully cut the skin of his consenting partner. The first taste changed his life, and after that, he started feeding regularly. He claims he no longer experiences the asthma that has plagued him since childhood, and he has stopped contracting infections from primary immunodeficiency disorders. He now consumes human blood at least once a week to maintain good health. Studies have confirmed that real-life modern vampires like Murticus do not suck blood to be cool. They do it because they believe their health depends on it. Without blood, they experience unpleasant symptoms like headaches, lethargy, pain, and depression. And although some real vampires do bite for blood, most use a lancet to make a small cut, usually between a donor's shoulder blades, and only take blood from willing donors, often a close friend, family member, or sexual partner and make sure that it's extracted in a proper and safe way. I'd love to hear from you if you are a real life vampire and would like to share your experience. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.